Not what you were expecting, huh? Or maybe it's exactly what you guys were expecting. Welcome to the Frank Addington 2022 NFL predictions. So this morning we talked about, you know, usually just post by text. Just post the text, co copy and paste into the room for the uh, for the season predictions this time of year. Uh, I posed a question if uh, just just to see if you guys wanted to see something different this year, and unanimously, uh, you guys picked doing a video instead. So I guess I have no other choice but to do it. So we're gonna get into it and. For those of you who watch this just for the purpose of uh, laughing at my picks, uh, I'd say, you know, you're, you're always wrong on your predictions. Yeah, I'm usually, I'm usually incorrect. That's definitely some truth to that. But I encourage you to uh, do your own picks, even if you just have to say, here's my division winners in wild card, and here's who wins the Super Bowl. So do your own picks if you're going to uh, – criticize the people who make theirs boldly. We're going to start with the AFC East. It's uh, it's kind of sunny. I don't know. I'm doing uh, right now we're hosting trivia. I'm hosting trivia while doing a live stream about my NFL picks. I don't know how. It's amazing. It's like 7.30 and it's like sunny out. So incredible. Well, wonders never ceased. AFC East. Winning the division. Uh, Bills I have at 13 and 4. Shocks Bills. The NFL's uh, number one defense added first round cornerback Elam and veteran Von Miller. Another rookie, uh, the punt god, will not be there this year. So, uh, five of Buffalo's first. Seven games are going to be against playoff teams. So while they are Super Bowl favorites by many people, they will have to earn their way just to get a division title. All right, coming in at second place, I have the New York Jets at 10 and 7. Wilson is in that kind of that same inconsistent and uncertain class as Tua of the Dolphins. But after he came back, after Wilson, Zach Wilson, Zach, came back from uh, injury last year, he came back as a better quarterback. He looked a lot better, even his rookie year. So uh, another uh, revelation was North Carolina Tar Heel rookie running back Carter, who was supported by two strong backups. The Jets uh, had the best draft, in my opinion, in 2022, landing cornerback Gardner and defensive end Johnson in the first round in hopes of improving what was a dreadful defense last year. Uh, two Ohio State, Johnny, targets were also nabbed in wide receiver Wilson in round one and tight end Ruckert in round three, who they were – that was an excellent pick by getting Ruckert in round three. Uh, this is a cold read, by the way, so just bear with me. AFC North. All right, so in first place, I've got the Baltimore Ravens at 12 and five. They uh, choked down the stretch, but another near perfect draft has them set up to be much better on defense, especially in the back end with Hamilton, an excellent pick. Martin, he was the best. Uh, he was the best safety in the draft. Marcus Williams joins that backfield as well, continuing his elite ascent. Now, how well running backs Dobbins and Edwards return from ACL tears is the biggest question on offense, which will enjoy the addition of first-round center Linderbaum as well as Minnesota. Golden Gopher, Diamond in the Rough, Phalele. I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's like six foot nine or something. He's going to be a good offensive lineman. 
In second place, I have the Cincinnati Bengals at 10 and 7. Cincinnati went into free agency instead of the draft to uh, fix the much maligned line that gave up 70 sacks in 2021. Rookie Dax Hill brings explosiveness to a below average secondary. Now the pass rush will again rely mostly on pressure up the middle, but will that be enough? In third place I have the Pittsburgh Steelers at nine and eight. We got some uh, we got some kayakers over here having some fun. Uh, nine and eight. The Steelers uh, clawed their way. Wow, wait. Clawed their way to a winning season in 2021, and likely will pull it off again this year. Pick it. I can't do a zoom on this, so I apologize. But uh, yeah, I can't do a zoom because I've got it. But maybe you guys saw the uh, trying to get out there so all right okay you can see my sheet there all right Pickett will establish himself as the starter at some point and he will use Harris a lot to his advantage uh, now the concern is the worst rushing defense that did little in the off in the off season to uh, better itself all right, and then fourth place, I have uh, John Boy's Browns at 6 and 11. This is a team whose window may have closed already. Now, there's still enough pieces there, especially on defense, to make something happen, but the defense won't be enough to get them a wild card. I really uh, I had them winning the Super Bowl last year, and that didn't work out. So, All right, AFC South. So the AFC South in first place, this is not – this might be one of the this might be the worst division in the NFL. In first place I have the Jacksonville Jaguars at a 10 and 7 record. Now Jacksonville has finally stabilized their coaching staff with Peterson and Caldwell. And the growth of second year quarterback uh, Lawrence will be aided by a revitalized offensive line led by Brandon Sheriff. The front office not only hit the nail on the head with their draft selections, but they inked a, key, a handful of key free agent veterans before that. Now asking all of that to come together in the first year is a leap of faith, but I'll take it. In second place, I have the Indianapolis Colts also at 10 and seven. Uh, defenses will discover that they can't stack the box as much on Taylor as new quarterback Ryan is out to prove he still has some proficient years left. He probably does, maybe a couple. Uh, the Colts took a gamble on the often injured cornerback, cornerback Gilmore, but that was a worthy roll of the dice considering how much they struggled in the back end last year. In third place, I have the Tennessee Titans at at uh, eight and nine. Okay, so there's a lot of pressure on incumbent starter uh, Tannehill, and in their favor, they do ha they they've got to be healthier this year than in 2021. Just by rule, and uh, rookie running back Haskins could be an impact guy who helps kind of relieve Tannehill. Or I'm uh, sorry helps relieve Derrick Henry, but also takes some pressure off Tannehill. I'm not high on the Titans this year. I'm really not. Maybe they will get off to a, I see them getting off to a good start, but then not being able to close down the stretch and losing some games. In fourth place, I have the Houston Texans. That's no surprise. I have them at four and 13. Did I say Titans eight and nine? Yeah, eight and nine. Houston Texans, fourth place, Four and thirteen. This is a rebuild. This is a building project with much overhaul and construction signs on the site. Uh, Lovey Smith is the right coach to guide them through it. It's going to take some time. 
in Houston. Let's go to the AFC West, where I have in first place, and this is, we go from the worst division to easily the best division. In the AFC West, I have first place, the Kansas City Chiefs at 12 and five. Um, now, other than back-to-back -back easy games in late December, there's not much let up in their schedule. So the toughest task for them will be holding off the competition. And not, I'm not just talking about in their own division. But uh, Reed has been here before. And even with a roster still studded with talent, uh, making it to five straight AFC championships is unprecedented. Are they up to it? All right, in second place, I've got the Denver Broncos at 11 and six. The wide receiver depth is 11 and six. The wide receiver depth is an issue, but Wilson has made a career out of thriving with less than stellar pass catchers. It's a top 10 defense, but they need to get after the quarterback more. And that starts with Chubb in a make or break year. All right, in third place, I have the Las Vegas Raiders at 10 and seven. Now, how much does Chandler Jones have left in the motor? Uh, he'll need to lead this defense, giving Las Vegas a one-two sack punch with Crosby, the linebacker. The play of the offensive line, which struggled in 2021, will be the difference between the Raiders offense being good and being spectacular. All right, fourth place, I have the uh, LA Chargers at nine and eight. They're gonna take advantage of the dwindling window. They are taking advantage of the dwindling window of Herbert's rookie contract by spending on veterans like JC Jackson, Khalil Mack, and Joseph Day on the defense. Absolutely no excuses for underachieving this year, but they will, again. All right, let's go to, I'm not gonna tell you the seedings until I'm done with the with the uh, NFC. All right, so let's go to the NFC East. How's everybody doing tonight? Enjoying the, uh, has anyone picked up a uh, trivia uh, win so far tonight? I hope you have, hope you're doing well. If not, good luck on the next round as I probably ask a question right now. Okay, NFC East. So this morning, um, I think it was Eagles fans said, Peters uh, picked the Eagles to win the, uh, to win the, NF the NFC East. Nope, I'm, I'm, before tonight, I had not unleashed my uh, picks. I hadn't even hinted at what I was gonna pick. So that's not true, not true at all, that I picked the Eagles to win the uh, NFC East. Okay, All right, don't jump to conclusions, Eagles. All right. All right, first place, I have the Philadelphia Eagles uh, at 12 and five. It's year two for Sirianni, and the Eagles should make strides after a playoff 2021, which is a bit of a surprise. One of the best offensive and defensive lines in the NFL will be the main thing that helped power them to another postseason appearance including a division title. Second place, I have the uh, Dallas Cowboys coming in at 11 and six. Did I say Eagles 12 and six? Eagles 12 and five. Dallas tw uh, 11 and six. Diggs is an all pro, but he needs to take fewer chances in allowing all that yardage. Uh, Parsons will continue to dominate at linebacker as an all pro. And on offense, Dallas will need some of their untested wide receivers to take Gallup's place before he returns strong from injury. Now, Prescott is, an, is as accurate a, a quarterback as there is in the NFL. Uh, but will McCartney continue to hold this team back? We'll see. All right, third place, I got the New York Giants finishing at 5-12. and 12. All right, weaknesses are everywhere on this offense, starting with that line. They will see, though, how, why it was a good move to draft Alabama right tackle Neal, number seven overall, while they continue to be reminded how bad a pick it was to pick up Barkley at number two overall. 
Defense and special teams look god awful again. And uh, wow, this division is a joke. So at number at the at fourth place, I did the I did my game by game predictions earlier on the Washington Commanders. I, I, like I said, they're going to be four and thirteen. So the only question here is, who's going to be idiotic enough to come in and coach this team in 2023? Let's go to the NF, NFC North. In first place, I have got the uh, little thing here. I've got the Green Bay Packers at 13 and four. I've got uh, so Green Bay's defense proved me wrong last year. In 2022, it's going to be good enough to crack the top five and be scary. So they will be even better than they were in 2021. Rodgers' uh, targets this year are questionable. They, uh, so this, from the slow-footed Lazard to the often nicked Cobb to some marginal tight ends. But who cares? The running backs are the strength of the, of the offense, in my opinion, and that line is a nice group. All right. Second place in the NFC North, I have the Minnesota Vikings. No hits, Minnesota Vikings at 11 and 6. All right, Kevin O'Connell's wide open attack will be good for the Vikings, and this could he could get Cousins to 5,000 yards this year and more wins. Now their pitiful defense should take at least a step forward with free agent signing linebacker Smith and rookie safety. Uh, sign and booth providing youth in the leader in the secondary to go along with the ageless Harrison Smith and Patrick Peterson. Peterson. Third place in the NFC North have the Detroit Lions. Okay, they're going to be five and twelve. Turn off ESPN and take a deep breath. It's the Lions. Fourth place, I have the Chicago Bears at four and thirteen. Their their sixth ranked defense of 2021 was misleading because it gave up a lot of points. Meanwhile, the offense will likely putter along with a few bursts of hope. They have a lot of just cast off wide receivers on that team. Uh, these guys are I liken these guys to the Texans. Which I talked about earlier. In other words, a just another rebuilding project. All right, let's go to the NFC South. And first place, I have the New Orleans Saints at 13 and four. Four of their first five games are very winnable. Um, I know that Thomas will be might be out for a couple of those games, but those games are very winnable. I'm not sure why everybody's overlooking this team. They're deep and loaded on defense, especially that line, which creates a lot of havoc for the quarterbacks. Uh, wide receivers Thomas is back, and rookie uh, Olave will be a stud on the other side. I mean, he could be rookie of the offensive rookie of the year. Winston, in my opinion, will have a test of Verde later in his career resurgence type of season. Another Buck quarterback who threw a lot of interceptions in his career early in his career and when he went to the Jets, he kind of found a home and he was he was better with that and he was became more of a leader and more of a winner. I see that happening this year. It, we saw the beginning of that last year with Winston. I see it continuing this year with another year under his belt. Uh, the offensive line was a little thin, however that's probably their biggest concern. In second place, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 10 and seven. The window closed in that playoff loss to the Rams last year. Both starting guards are gone, and the defense was weak in the second half. Bowles will bring out the best of them this year, but his clock management skills are a little questionable. In third place, I have the uh, Aces Panthers coming in at 6-11. and 11. Carolina was fool's gold last year, starting out 3-0 before falling to 5-12. and 12. Matt Rule is a walking dead man. 
and uh, Mayfield will be an upgrade over Darnold, while North Carolina State rookie left tackle Ikwanu has the tall task of keeping him on his feet. Running back Hubbard uh, better be ready to carry the load again because McCaffrey is always hurt. He's quickly losing value. He's getting older and he's pretty much at the point where he's just damaged goods, I think. Fourth place, I have uh, Andrews Atlanta Falcons with a record of 2-15. and 15. This is a rebuilding year for the Falcons who have they have a raw Davis Mill type prospect and Ritter. Uh, defensive and offensive lines are dreadful. London and Pitts look exciting though. So if they land the number one spot in the draft this year and Ritter looks so-so, look for them to go after one of those top QBs, the one from, Al from Stroud or the guy from Alabama.